Hi, everybody. My name is Dr. Michael Viega, and I'm an assistant professor of music at the John Jay Cowley School of Music, Montclair State University in New Jersey. Thank you to the conference committee for the monumental task of organizing and getting us together today. Uh, it's a tremendous honor to be with you here today to talk with you about my play as an arts-based researcher. And I look forward to hearing from the other spotlight speakers and engaging in your questions afterwards. What you are hearing are autonomous research results conveyed in a song. This song, which I will discuss more about later, represents the composite theme of transfiguration in relation to understanding stages of identity formation for people who have experienced a spinal cord injury. Every sound you hear uh, contains a sample, systematically and reflexively gathered from original songs by adults who had experienced a spinal cord injury. These samples were artistically organized, coded, categorized, and structurally collaborated for you to be able to encounter them aesthetically. This song is called We're Alive, and it begins with the phrase, every door will open, followed by heralding chimes and a trumpet and a bass drum that provides firm support for affirmation of new possibilities. Transfiguration was chosen as a theme over transformation due to transfiguration's spiritual connotations. Transformation suggests that a new state of being emerges from a former self that dissipates, like a caterpillar transforming into a moth. Transfiguration, however, implies that a new state of being was always present, awaiting to emerge. Thus, a person is not remade, but rather the true nature of one's identity is revealed. Very subtle but very vital differences, such as the one between transfiguration and transformation, demonstrates for me the importance of arts-based research, that engagement with art and harnessing one's artistic sensibilities in research can evoke very subtle interactions that otherwise might be overlooked within other research methodologies. This song is meant to provide a sonic image of transfiguration in relation to self-concepts post-spinal cord injury and it encourages the listener to generate their own understanding and their own theory through the engagement with the song. I want to note that what I'm presenting to you today is not a definitive notion of arts-based research, as its beauty lies within its diversity. I stand within a light illuminated by Carolyn Kenny and nurtured by pioneers like Diane Austin, Jane Edwards, Tara Merrill, Alpha Woodward, Michelle Fornash, Gillian Valacourt, and Carolyn Arneson, and all, so many others who daringly brought the arts into music therapy research, especially during time periods where research silos seem to be very prevalent in our field. Just as important to me have been researchers like Tony Wigger, Christian Gold, Felicity Baker, Sherry Robb, Katrina McFerrin, just to name a few where even though art might not have always been present in data generation and dissemination, for me, the research designs and agendas have been treated with great attention to aesthetics and beauty. These researchers are able to weave in and out of multiple ways of thinking fluidly, creating a tapestry of knowledge over a period of time and over many articles. For me, the craft of research design itself is an aesthetic stance and a creative endeavor. I do not see research and art as a binary narrative, and I do not see the role of art in research within one epistemology or one research methodology, even though it does seem that arts-based research is subjugated to an extension of qualitative design and construction of its knowledge. For me, art and research are not an either or, but a both and. When seeing arts-based research as its own research methodology that can live within both constructionist and objectionist methodologies, beautiful paradoxes and ambiguities emerge. And it's there that beauty allows for new theory to unfold, information to be felt, 
and to be shared in very exciting ways. The role of the arts in aesthetic knowledge and research has really flourished across a wide variety of research methodologies. For instance, statistical data is being visualized in new ways that harnesses the power of aesthetics and beauty to communicate complicated statistical data information and getting it to go viral online. Data sonification has emerged to work with biomedical and social science data of high complexity, as we are able to extract patterns of listening to statistical data in ways that visualization might miss, not to mention it being more accessible for partially sighted and blind communities. In recent years, there's also been a surge of artistic dissemination of research in various forms. This has allowed research to be shared outside of traditional academic contexts, whose platforms often marginalize outside voices due to gatekeeping and other systemic barriers. Research being disseminated virally online does not come without its own implical ethical implications, such as leading and manipulating audiences through clickbait. However, the possibility of arts-based research feels more vital than ever, as humans face tremendous challenges from ecological and climate decline, poverty, global violence, vast infringements of human rights, and the spread of neoconservative ideals that leads to anti-intellectualism and a dismissal of research. I would like to take a moment to zoom away from this very broad view of arts-based research with towards detailing how a creative worldview has guided my own work, focusing on one particular project that was done in collaboration with Dr. Felicity Baker at the University of Melbourne. I was provided a large database of songs created by songwriters who were in active rehabilitation following a spinal cord injury. I was provided the opportunity to utilize remixing as a method of experiential song analysis to help generate new theory and enhance deductive analysis that was being done by Felicity Baker, Jeanette Tamplin, and their team. Remixing involves digitally sampling small moments within original songs and editing, layering, and manipulating these components to form a new composition. Remixing provides the opportunity to illuminate new knowledge by recontextualizing source sound material and representing new possibilities, generate theory, and generate new questions through aesthetic performance. For this study, I had the opportunity to experience and remix songs that had no part in creating as a music therapist, and this provided me a level of objectivity not afforded in previous research I had done when using remix. This was beneficial as I wanted to be an outside listener without a clinical context so that I could better understand how songs created by people in music therapy can communicate lived experience to outside audiences. What I enjoy about the two articles that emerge from this work is that it details the craft of an emergent arts-based research design from pilot to implementation, investigating 27 songs written by nine different ad adult songwriters. These articles equate my artistic choices and my creative worldview to research design and data generation. For instance, my choice of digital music technology, the Akai MPC Studio, allowed me to sample small moments of each song in a much more meticulous but immediate way. I was able to analytically take notes of what I was experiencing with NMPC software. And I was able to organize and categorize the samples in a way that was very different than my creative process in Rising from the Ashes. These artistic choices were research choices. And for me, there was no need to differentiate between the two. The title of the final EP is a set of songs, a song cycle called My Curse is My Gift, which consists of four composite character portraits representing a theory of growth and self-concept post spinal cord injury. We move from 
non-compliance. Everybody needs something from me I just want to survive Want me to get involved I will never comply I Want my life the way it used to be With my mates carefree To accepting help. To creative engagement. Finally, transfiguration. This world is a gift. Showing me that there's a greater purpose to this. This world is a gift. This world is a gift. Showing me there is a greater purpose to this. Your life is worth living. Despite my injuries. Me. This world has purpose, never give up. This world has purpose, never give up. I'm alive, and you're alive, and we're alive. The theory presented here is wholly unique and was only generated through creative engagement with these songs. The title, My Curse is My Gift, represents a complex dynamic that emerged in which songwriters suggested that their accident was a gift that actually helped them reveal their true self. The seed of this discovery came in a song, one of the first songs I actually remixed, where the songwriter was looking back at their past self and saying that she was, quote, happy in my oblivion, end quote. My artistic sensibilities drew me to the poetic nature of that lyric, and remixing it allowed me to explore it in a way that began the process of generating something new, a new complexity, something very evocative that could be explored in the future. For me, these artistic practices and research better mirror how theory and knowledge are generated as our within our practice as music therapists.
As an academic who serves on several editorial boards for music therapy journals, I've been curious as to how reviewers evaluate the artwork disseminated in research, especially when the artwork is primary in the dissemination of results. The criteria and process evaluation of performative and aesthetic results is elusive, and some might assume that qualitative criteria would suffice. However, this is contested, especially when arts-based research is presented as its own paradigm. Some question the appropriateness of evaluating arts-based research, being cautious not to reduce or objectify the art in any way, whereas others might see the need to help mentor new arts-based researchers and help them navigate through academic programs. Within this debate, there is a need to understand how audiences perceive and evaluate arts-based research performative results, which has led me over the past five years to do this by performing my own study, Rising from the Ashes, for, audi for, for audiences across a, a wide spectrum uh, of places and settings and gaining their feedback and dialoguing with them. For me, engaging with audiences and performing my arts-based research study has revealed to me new elements that were missing from my original study that weren't discussed or were hidden. Data generation in arts-based research is cyclical and new information emerges within every performance. For me, that's its beauty. Arts-based research had, has its greatest impacts for me when being able to encounter audiences directly and dialogue with them about my research. Traditional academic platforms for disseminating research are often not suited for performances where video or audio links might become missing or hard to access and performative results might appear to readers as secondary to the text. For instance, the pilot design for My Curse is My Gift was published in the Nordic Journal of Music Therapy. The article itself has been viewed 525 times. However, the performative results, which came through in a song called Get and Give Back, has only been heard 138 times on SoundCloud. Many of those were not listened to all the way through, and several of them were probably me clicking on the link to make sure it worked. And though SoundCloud does offer a platform for feedback, no comments have been made. I compare that with my performance of Rising from the Ashes, where I've engaged 200 plus people in a variety of settings, have received over 166 evaluations, and had a chance to directly dialogue, receiving immediate feedback. In these performances, the research and knowledge is never static, but engaging, reflexive, and cyclical. Arts-based research challenges the false dichotomy that tends to separate research and art. In arts-based research, works of art can be seen as works of research, and the components of what we consider to be traditional research might not be immediately obvious until we discuss and is seen within creative worldviews. For instance, detailing our craft as artists is an act of research design, and performing artistic inquiries is the dissemination of results. Arts-based research gets us to see research in a new light, discover new methods of inquiry, and invent new platforms of dissemination that increases audience impact. Arts-based research also embraces radical and politically motivated acts of inquiry and dissemination towards the purpose of sparking critical dialogue and promoting social justice. Powerful examples of this in music therapy include songs that V. Fansler and Mavon Gumbel have published in Critical Pedagogy in the Arts Therapies Online, open access journal, exploring and expressing their own genderqueer per personhood within profession and training. Another example of critical arts-based inquiry is Dr. Hakeem Leonard's song, which explores colorism, marginalization, code switching, and tokenism as a black person within professional settings. In these examples, making the distinction between these songs as art and research moves us into a binary a false dichotomy that negates their impact to invite us into deeper and more meaningful conversations. The world of music therapy research is indeed fascinating, expansive, and always developing. For me, arts-based research has really helped integrate multiple parts of myself, myself as a clinician, researcher, artist, musician, educator, and a stakeholder in the human condition.
Arts-based research is not its own silo, but rather it lives within a variety of worldviews and ways of being, being expressed through aesthetics and ethics. Aesthetics is not owned by one epistemology or research methodology, but can help integrate and embody knowledge in a way that I hope we continue as a field to expand upon in the years to come. And although I have spoken about arts-based research for 20 minutes, I'm not wholly convinced that that's a term that even fairly captures what I'm trying to express. Maybe that's something for me to create music about later. However, herein lies its beauty. Arts-based research is never static always expanding and always revealing new possibilities of how we design, generate, and disseminate knowledge of music therapy research. Thank you all very kindly for your time. I look forward to your questions. Have a great conference. Thank you.